so everyone <clears throat> likes to use these concepts of spirituality, oneness. It's not about a good grasp of the intellectual. It's not about a intellectual understanding. Because this is all knowledge. This is still worldly knowledge. And worldly knowledge is information that we have gained from the world this picture this appearance and from this appearance we take information we store that that's really the only thing we know and that is the substance of thought that is the substance of memory that is the substance of imagination that is the substance of the very concept that creates this world itself so self-knowledge as opposed to worldly knowledge is inquiry into this storehouse of knowledge inquiry into these concepts about the world and the body and the mind and the me self-knowledge is questioning every bit of knowledge and being open to laying down beliefs for just a moment just letting them lay down for a second And in that openness, question not why is the world, not how do I attain freedom from seeking and suffering, because we see that that language has a built-in assumption. Why is the world this way? The built-in assumption is that the world is. And then we're wondering why it's that way. Why am I suffering and seeking? The built-in assumption is that there is an I that does this, or that has this, or that is the recipient or the sufferer so the question comes and we ask to who is this question arising that wipes out all of the assumptions To whom is it arising? No matter what the question is, no matter what the problem is, to whom is the question arising? You should be able to answer this question. Well, it's arising to me. But what is me? 
who am I? Who really am I? What really am I? Because that's our reference point. Who wants this? Me. Who's suffering? Me. Who's seeking? Me. It's always about me. Who is this me? So this is the basis of inquiry. Not allowing any assumptions to guide the search, but pinpointing the search, how it steers clear of any assumptions. Who am I? So if I exist, I should surely be able to find me. So what is me? What am I? What do we know about ourselves? And we'll say, well, I am a person. But what does that mean? What does person mean? Well, we got that from the world. I don't know what it really means. It's it's pointing to the body. It's pointing to these thoughts, this mind. That's supposed to be a person. Well, I am this body. I am I am these thoughts. I am this mind. But if we notice what we are, whatever it is is seeing the body is aware of the body is aware of thoughts that are coming and going we may not notice that but we are we see the thoughts we see them every single one of them we are witnessing them as they come and go it's obvious That body is an object that we're witnessing. Right now, you can look down, you can see the body. It's obvious. You can feel it, you can see it, you can smell it. Suppose you could even taste it. The body is an object. And I am witnessing it. Now that's obvious. The thoughts happen in witnessing. So I must be this witness of the body and the thoughts. But wait a minute now. I know I'm the body, I know I'm the thoughts, I know I'm a person. And okay, well, that's where we go back into these concepts, this worldly knowledge. And we've just agreed to, to lay those aside for a moment and just look at what's obvious. Look at what's arising in direct experience. And if we do that with openness, we see it's obvious that what we are witnesses the thoughts, witnesses the body doesn't matter what the thoughts are doing doesn't matter if they're spiritual thoughts doesn't matter if they're good thoughts or bad thoughts or because the labeling of those is more thoughts more commentary and thoughts and it's obvious that what I am whatever that is is seeing this body feeling the pains feeling the emotions feeling the form and then something else becomes very clear if we rest as that witness and we just watch what's going on 
it's clear that the thoughts change constantly it's clear that the emotions change constantly the body itself even changes the body itself is not even the same body that it was at birth every 10 years is totally reproduced the cells reproduce themselves the body itself is changing every second and definitely has made lots and lots of changes yet we were there to see the change and that witnessing has not changed the witnessing did not change so this pure witnessing awareness this presence of witnessing that becomes something that is obvious if we just look if we just watch and in that in that we see that everything else has been changing constantly we notice something else that's very interesting and that's this constant compulsion to reference the me the I some entity we see that happening and we see that reference is an image we see that that person that me that I've taken myself to be is an image it's a picture it's a mental image that is formed in memory in thought in imagination back and forth between the past and the future constantly trying to form this image that that's constantly happening and it becomes very very clear very obvious that that idea of me that can do any of this is nothing but a thought when we establish ourselves as the witness and we notice that that's happening and we simply watch we see the substance of this person we see the substance of this me we see that it's nothing more than a thought nothing more than an idea an image that's constantly being constructed from memory and imagination an image that's constantly being projected and referred to we see the stories that are woven around this character constantly we see the mechanism at work we realize that there never was a person there never was a me this was always a, a story and the suffering was always a story about me about I but it's obvious that that witnessing is never touched by that suffering it only watches it all paths lead to witnessing all paths eventually lead to witnessing whether it's meditation japas mantras pujas tantras yantras all paths lead to witnessing all paths lead to pointing out that witnessing notice that that witnessing is going on right now it's not that we gain the witness 
it's that we notice that that's already going on and in that we see the mechanism at work we see the story of me being created and in that seeing of that mechanism in realization that the me was always a story and there was no entity that's suffering there is no entity to seek to search to go on a spiritual path but that's always been the story the nature of n witnessing is awareness seeing, knowing this awareness sees the thoughts sees the body, sees the world sees the commentary and thought sees the conceptual creations the experience comes as sensations, perceptions. This body itself is nothing but a bundle of sensations. And then the mind takes those sensations and it bundles them up, creates a concept called my body. See if that's not happening. See if that's not exactly what's happening the perceptions the, the feeling of the foot the feeling of the nose the feeling of the stomach rumbling these are all taken and bundled up in a concept called body and that's done in mind witnessing sees the rumbling the sensation but it doesn't know anything about it it doesn't have a concept for it. It doesn't have a name for it. It simply sees the sensation purely. And then it sees the thought labeling that sensation hunger. It sees the sensation, it sees the commentary, it sees the sensation, it sees the labeling and thought. It sees the story being created out of sensation. It sees it. It sees the mechanism. If you see the mechanism, you're free from it. It's not what you are. You're not this constant weave of stories that's being created. Stories talking about me suffering and me seeking and I need this and I need to go to these teachers and I need to find these methods and I need to go and have a kundalini awakening or I need to go and have some kind of spiritual concept about it but it's never about that and any teacher that guides you down that path is lying to you because it is simple so simple a child can understand a child does understand a child is that because they have none of this worldly knowledge they have none of this conceptual weaving going on they simply are they simply exist they, they are in the moment as we get to be adults then we we try to build this image this identity we continually do this memory imagination memory imagination it's a contraction it's a knot it's a contraction in fear separation is a contraction in fear and then we we imagine this and then we seek a way out of it, <laughs> we, it the child is so simple and innocent and has none of these worries we've created these worries 
and now we're looking for a way out and it's so simple witnessing is happening right now notice that if a thought comes about suffering if thought comes about seeking see that witnessing sees that thought and that's it it doesn't matter what the content of thought is you don't have to go to pray to some statue you don't have to go and sit in meditation for 20 years while meditation is happening that's the witnessing <laughs> that's the witnessing there's no product to be gained from meditation there's no point in meditation there's no objective the objective is the activity itself that's happening witnessing simply rest as the witness watch the thoughts come see what they're saying see what they're doing watch the sensations see that everything we have ever known has come as a sensation as an experience the body is an experience thoughts are an experience who's the experiencer of mind that's not a spiritual question that's not a metaphysical or a mystical question who is the experiencer of a mind it's not a Zen riddle who is it can you find it can you find an object that is witnessing mind Can you see the seer? Just see that these thoughts are coming. See the content. See the commentary. See the sensations. See the process of conceptualizing and projecting an image based on these sensations. Just see that that's happening. And in, the, in seeing that, you realize that you're beyond it, that you're prior to that. And that what you are cannot be in that picture, that you're seeing the picture. No matter what the picture is, you're seeing it. You are seeing the picture. Whether it's a beautiful day, whether it's a rainy day, whether you're suffering, whether you're seeking, whether you're happy it doesn't make any difference you're always seeing the picture the seer of the picture is not a part of the picture is the seeing itself but the seeing is what is doing the looking we can't find an object that is doing the seeing because that object would come up and be seen and there would still be a seeing prior to it what is the seer prior to any of it that could possibly arise it's 
so we don't find what we are as an object we simply realize that what we are is that which is seen we simply realize what we are by negating all that we're not and it's obvious all that we're not because it all arises for us to see if I can see it it's not what I am if I can be aware of it it's not what I am because I'm seeing it 